body area network. Now let's take a look at that. So we're going to Google body area network and we're going to click on the Wikipedia link. A body area network, also referred to as a wireless body area network, or a body sensor network, or a medical body area network, is a wireless network of wearable computing devices. Body area network devices may be embedded inside the body as implants or pills, may be surface mounted on the body in a fixed position, or may be accompanied devices which humans can carry in different positions, such as in closed pockets, by hand or in various bags. Devices are becoming smaller, especially in body area networks. These networks include multiple small body sensor units and a single central unit. Despite this trend, decimeter sized smart devices still play an important role. They act as data hubs or gateways and provide a user interface for viewing and managing body area network applications on the spot. The development of wireless body area network technology started around 1995. Around the idea of using wireless personal area network technologies to implement communications on, near, and around the human body. About six years later, the term body area network came to refer to systems where communication is entirely within, on, and in the immediate proximity of a human body. A wireless body area network system can use wireless personal area network wireless technologies as gateways to reach longer ranges. Through gateway devices, it is possible to connect the wearable devices on the human body to the internet. This way, medical professionals can access patient data online using the internet independent of the patient's location. Now let's go back and click on images. And as you can see, there are a lot of images and papers on the body area network. And every image has a body, a bunch of nodes inside the body, collecting biometric data and sending it to medical doctors, nurses, hospitals, ambulance, medical databases, and even immediate family members. There are literally tons of papers on this, and we could be here all day. Like this one, it says body control unit and it's sending the data to the cloud, caretaker, doctor, or ambulance. This is very high end security because we are talking about healthcare. They don't want people to be able to just reach in and hack other people. Your near field effect is them electrocuting you under the skin or near the body. We're going to take a look at a medical body area network, and this is something the hospitals use during COVID. That's where it actually originated from. Obviously, like we said earlier, it's always for your health, you know, and your safety. Yeah. Hospitals use the medical body area network and a software called Omnit to report data from human bodies up to the cloud. This was done in hospitals during the pandemic. Data ran through Project Salus, a Pentagon effort that provided predictive logistics tools for COVID-19 response to the command. If we Google medical body area network and click on images, we see all these wonderful images again. This is cybersecurity of the human body. And who is the end user? Once again, it's emergency, family, medical staff, medical server, and database. Now, some of you might be wondering how a family member can have access to this data. Well, that's only if you're a value chain partner. And for thirty dollars or $40,000 a year, you can buy a remote control and control your loved ones. Let's open this up and give it a read. Passive hardware considerations for medical body area network transceivers. In hospitals and healthcare institutions, the sheer amount of patient metrics to track for the staff of doctors and nurses can be been a point of contention. Lawsuits based on the grounds of negligence are a risk that all healthcare practitioners take. Furthermore, there's an estimated 200,000 patients that die in the United States annually from medical errors. 
Introducing wireless patient monitoring in these environments can potentially mitigate the risks that are innately involved in an environment geared at treatment and maintenance of sick people. There is always potential for cyber attacks, but the rewards may outweigh the risks. Wired technologies limit patients' mobility, increase the difficulty in transporting patients, and often introduce significant delays and hassle for the caregiver in arranging the cables. With patient monitoring market expected to hit 27 billion by 2020, wireless patient monitoring is poised to be a major part of that. According to Berg Insight, more than 3 million people worldwide were being monitored remotely by professional caregivers in 2013. This is most likely from wireless medical services such as medical implant communication service and wireless medical telemetry services. Wireless medical telemetry services is most often used for critical patient care, whereas the more recently developed medical body area network technology can be used to simplify tracking biometrics and more routine patient care. Moreover, medical implant communication services and wireless medical telemetry services, small bandwidths do not support high data rate applications. In 2014, the FCC finalized the rules for medical body area networks, a network of sensors, actuators, worn on the human body that communicate with a controlling device via a wireless link. With the spectrum allocation in the S-band from 2360 to 2400 MHz, the ruling states that the 2360 to 2390 MHz band is restricted to indoor use, while the rest of the band is open for use in other locations, for example, residential. The medical body area network is a subset of the more general trend of wireless body area networks, or body sensor networks, that includes non-medical applications, such as human computer interfaces, for example, neural interface, virtual reality, location tracking, and personal fitness tracking. Now we can take a look at this wonderful image over here. And these are all the applications where they use your wireless body area network. On the left hand side, you can see all the medical applications, such as vital signs monitoring, respiration monitoring, your ECG, pH monitor, glucose, hearing aid, disability assistance, obviously, because they're always helping the disabled, muscle tension monitor, respiration monitoring, blind, speech disability, and artificial hands. Then on the right-hand side, you can see all the non-medical applications, which is going to be video streaming, data file transfer, sports, 3D video, forgotten things monitor, entertainment applications, gaming, and social networking. In 2018, which is when this article was released, the main reason that they switched to all this AI and medical body area network and wireless biosignaling has to do with your digital twin. The cybersecurity for your wireless body area network and saving the hospital money on getting sued because they can take your biomarker biosignals in real time, like we just read. All right, so when we look at the medical body area network, you just, we just look at all these images and all you see is the, the body and then, you know, a database where everything gets sent to. And the end user, you know, it's always a medical professional. So if the end user is always a medical professional, how come is it that, you know, they know so much about your health, but they don't know about their own industries? That's where it doesn't add up to me. That's where we need to start asking doctors, nurses, physicians, people who work in the ER about these systems and how they function and what their job really is. Is it possible that some of them don't know that they're actually doing this? Is it possible that they're unaware? How, how are you doing a job and you don't know what you're doing? Okay. Because that, that's the next step. Right now, we're going into wireless healthcare, right? That's the whole point of this. They wanna be, so you sit in your home comfortably and instead of you know the doctor coming to see you, Just, they, they log into your body and like see your try. vitals, see how you're doing and make whatever changes they need to. Okay, quick question. Yeah. So if they're going to be able to do this wirelessly, they already do. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. What about the pharmaceutical companies? Yeah, it's it's pharmaceutical drugging too. They, they drug you wirelessly. You. Oh. There's something called wireless oh. drug delivery. Oh wow! Literally, I have it too. But like, they drug you wirelessly. They don't. You don't. So no more pills. No, you don't need Just a pill. A push of a button. Yeah. And they wow. can. That that's where it's like. They wow. have full control over everything. If so they do basically body, 
overdose to if they want. What, what, yes. That's crazy. Yes. That's, yeah. That, yeah. yeah. And there is an industry crazy. called wireless yeah. drugging, which we are going to go look into. An industry called wireless, wireless drugging. drugging. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. And this is all we public knowledge. Yes. On it's, the internet. Google it. Wireless drugging. It's wow. a legit industry, and, they, and they've been at it. I mean, they call it an emerging technology, but they, they've been emerging for 50 years. Uh -huh. At this point, it's not emerging. It's, you know, they have systems set up. They even have laws and legislation set up. So there's, you know, it's not emerging. It's already in place, unfortunately. Wow. Now, if we go back to Google and click on another one of these articles, this one over here. In 2012, the FCC released an order to allocate spectrum for medical body area networks. So let's read. FCC gives medical body area networks clean bill of health. Wireless monitoring devices will improve hospital care and make way for continuous home monitoring. Again, this was on June 4th, 2012, and they even included a lovely image for you. Electronic health monitoring took a big step forward last week, last week being in 2012, when the U.S. Federal Communications Commission approved Spectrum for medical body area networks. The FCC allotted the frequencies between 2360 and 2400 megahertz, which were part of the spectrum that was returned to the commission when TV shifted from analog to digital. Medical Body Area Network is a network of inexpensive disposable sensors worn on or even implanted in the body. The sensors monitor various vital signs, such as temperature, blood pressure, or glucose levels, and transmit the information to a controlled device. The technology holds the promise of getting rid of the myriad wires that tie patients to their hospital beds today. Wires that complicate patients' care and pose infection risks. The first use of medical body area networks will likely be in hospitals, but a long-term application could be remote monitoring devices that allow doctors to check on patients at home. FCC Chairman Julius Janagowski said the decision opened up tremendous potential to untether patients from tubes and wires and improve the quality of health care and ensure better outcomes for patients. He cited estimates predicting that medical body area network monitoring could save an average of U.S. $12,000 per patient by decreasing hospital-acquired infections, among the other benefits of medical body area networks. The networks can potentially alert doctors to problems before the patient's condition becomes critical, thus avoiding the need for acute intervention. The lack of multiple wires makes it easier for hospital staff to move the patient and gives the patient more freedom to walk around. Hospital personnel or home caregivers can quickly add or remove sensors as medical conditions warrant. Several FCC commissioners hailed the decision as a blueprint for how industries can cooperate in sharing spectrum, alluding to ongoing skirmishes between the defense, broadcasting, and technology industries about how to use limited spectrum resources. GE Healthcare had first proposed allocating specific spectrum to medical body area networks in 2007, but was met with opposition from the aerospace industry, which uses part of the spectrum for flight testing. It took five years, but the two industries reached a compromise. This proceeding affirms what is possible when members of our communications industry work past initial disagreements, said Commissioner Kleinberg. Perhaps the details of their approach can be followed to promote sharing in other bands as well. Healthcare device makers and the aerospace industry have served as a model for developing shared use policies for spectrum that addresses interface concerns while allowing new services to flourish, said Commissioner Jessica Risenworcel. With the growing demand for spectrum resources, it is cooperative efforts like this that give us hope and faith. Although medical body area networks have cleared a major hurdle, it will be at least another year before they hit the market. First, there is a public comment period, and then the FCC must set up rules for registration and frequency coordination. The Commission will also have to approve and certify medical body area network products, just as it does for all radio frequency equipment. 
And because medical body area network equipment will be sold as medical devices, they will also have to gain approval from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. The medical body area network has four layers of cybersecurity inside of you only. Layer one is your body in blue. Layer two is you bootstrapping to a device. Layer three is your black box decision making to forward data to whoever it is that is meant to receive that data. And layer four is the end user. They, they're obsessed with control on levels I don't think any of us can understand because we're not psychopaths. We're not on well, that level. It's a game for them, I feel. Yeah, right? that's what that's, it sounds like. It's a game. Oh, it's fun. Like Hunger Games, I guess, it right? Is. The games of... We are living in Hunger movies. Games, yeah. literally. Yeah. And that's yeah. uh, one thing, I, you know, with the whole movement, I always said is, what do these people want when they literally have they everything, know. have all the money in the world? Yeah. What do they want? It's just about it, control. They need synthetic biology to do what we do naturally. And with, even with synthetic biology, it still doesn't stand a chance. Just like anything, fake is never better than no, real. Like, never, never. There, you can never you know, make, make a replica as good as the original. Yeah. And that's exactly what, how, how it is. But the more they dumb us down, the less questions we ask, the less research we do on the proper or appropriate things that we need to learn of. So I guess it's better like that for them, right? Yeah, it's better for us to just be stupid. Dude, live a life and be positive and don't think about anything else. And oh just my God, I love that turn. you brought that up. I am so annoyed. I keep getting everybody to tell me, just think positive. Why are you it thinking about this stuff? It is positive I'm stuff? thinking. Thank I'm trying you. to save my life Thank and my you. future. But hey, I mean. Knowledge is power. Knowledge and awareness, like Always. we said earlier, exactly. it is very because powerful. Because when, when you it's know key. how this works, you, know, how, you yes. know what you're up against. Yeah, when you exactly. know what you're up against. Like before, I genuinely was scared about how all this is going to play out because I knew something was going on. I didn't have all the details, but I knew something's wrong. Something's up. And I couldn't always feel that like there is no way yeah. there's no other people who feel yeah. what we feel, that there's something different. There's yeah. something getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. I mean, we feel it inside. I would hope yeah. that there are still humans out there who feel that out there. It's very few, but there yeah. are. There I are. Hope. And that's where we, that's why I said we need to just get together Unite. and just start reading and start reading again what even if you're a firm government believer and yeah our government wants the best for us great then go read your own government's documents yes there you go if that's what you believe in awesome i these are all duck government <laughs> papers so go read up on your own government and what they are saying about what they do what did they, where did they put all their billions of dollars into it 